Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be making these phone uh, phone wallpapers. They look really cool, and uh, yeah, you can. There's loads of ways you can personalize it. I've only got this uh, showing the background just because it was one of my past designs, and I thought it looked pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so um, okay. So this isn't really a tutorial for just designers. Anyone can really do this. It's pretty easy, and uh, yeah, you can really personalize it. Like like if you weren't a designer, <coughs> excuse me. If you weren't a designer, then you wouldn't have your past work in the background. So you could literally go to Google and just find anything you think looks cool, like a wallpaper of a bridge or a city or something. It doesn't really matter just because um, it's for personal use, so they can't really do anything about you using it. But uh, yeah, so I just used some of my past work, I thought it looked pretty cool. And yeah, I'm going to show you how to make this. And uh, yeah, you can also see I've got my logo in there. And yeah, uh, well, it's, it's one of my logos, but I like to use my signature logo for uh, personal stuff. So yeah, I thought I'd use it for this tutorial. And yeah, let's get into it. So first off, you want to go to File, New, and there you can, now when you go to uh, Mobile App Design, no, not, app, not App Design, it's, um, uh, yeah, it is App Mobile App Design, my bad. And um, if you go to Artboard Size, you can see you have all these dimensions here for all these different phones. Well, actually, no, these are all mainly Apple phones, and then you've got Android. And uh, yeah, so you've got all these choices here. If your phone isn't here, you could just go to Google and type in your phone and then the dimension, the screen dimensions, and then you can just type those in here and uh, you can change that if you need to. It might say in inches, you can just change that. And uh, yeah, so once you found your phone, or I'm just gonna go for the iPhone 6 Plus just because it's the biggest, and then that usually means it can downsize to any of the rest. So yeah, we're just gonna go for the biggest and then we just press okay, and then we'll have this. I don't really like to use, work with artboards, as you can see they're kind of a new thing in a, the update of uh, Photoshop CC. I don't really like to use, work with them, so I, what I usually do, I just drag the layer one above the artboard, just click on the artboard and press delete, and there we go. Now we are back to what we're used to, and uh, maybe it's just something I need to start using a bit more and get used to it, uh, get, get used to using it, but at the moment I'm not going to use my artboards. And uh, yeah, so as you can see we've got our iPhone 6, uh, 6 Plus. Uh, screen dimensions right here and for the background we're gonna pick a color it's not gonna be black it's going to be pick a color that you want so we're gonna go for a blue and then it's gonna be a really really dark version so you might it might like show as black in the preview but there will be a bit of your color still in there because in the video like you can see this might actually show as black but uh, maybe if I actually did just get black up you might be able to tell the difference uh, oh, that's not black is it <laughs> uh, Let's just get rid of the stroke. So yeah, you can you can see the difference between the black and then the the really dark version of the color that we had. And uh, yeah, so now that we've, now once you got that, we want to add our background picture because like in the example, I've got some of my past work. So if you're a designer, you might want some to put some of your past work in the background as well. But if you're not a designer, you could just go to Google. And um, let me just go to Google. <laughs> Those are all videos that you that have already been up. So yeah. Um, uh, we can just type in cool wallpapers and then yeah you can see all of this stuff you just put it in the back or you just save it and then I'll show you how to import it now uh, so to import it you would just go to file open and then you find whatever whatever where the, wherever you save the image and then it will come up like this uh, well you wouldn't have all these layers down the side but uh, yeah you'll come up and then you can just click and drag well, okay, uh, let's just make a selection just so we don't drag all the other layers. So just click and drag our image for our background, and then we go, we've got it here, and then we just can press Command-T, and then we can enlarge it just to fill the whole um, the whole canvas, just like that. And there we go, now we got our image into the background, and already it looks pretty cool because we just got, we just turned our design that we already had, and we made it optimizable, well, we optimized it to the iPhone 6s screen dimensions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to click on our background image, change the blending option to luminosity, and then we're just going to lower the opacity, uh, just not too much, but uh, I think about 25 will be good. And uh, yeah, you don't want it to be too hard to see like this, but um, you do want it to be uh, quite dark as well. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if it gets a bit too dark because we will be adding light anyway. Uh, right now, so um, to add a light, all you need to do is create a new layer. Make sure it's go it goes above your background design. Change your foreground color to white, or so you just click change it to white like that. Then uh, get your brush out. Make sure it's about the same size as mine, 
and uh, yeah, so um, make sure it covers a good decent uh, part of your canvas and then you want to change your blending option to overlay and then you can just click and there you go, you can see it really adds a really nice shine to um, to the design and uh, yeah, so we, we just did one in the sky over there and we just want to do one in the corner down here and, yeah, we, and there we go, it looks really nice and uh, we can see a comparison to what it was before and yeah, it really lightens it up and really brings it alive if you can say that <laughs> Okay, so now we've done that, we are going to add these squares. So you can see in this example, I've got all these little squares in the kind of set to, they're not, you can kind of see like a, you can see through the square and it looks kind of cool. So yeah, we're going to add like some of those as well. So to do that, we're going to find our color and we want to use the same color that we had for our background, for like our really dark color, but we want to have a lighter version of it. So we might go for a really light blue, like that, and then just get our rectangle tool. You, can, you don't have to use a rectangle tool to be fair, you could use a, you can use any of these tools, but we're going to use the, the rectangle tool and then we can hold shift and alt, oh no not shift, <laughs> um, if you hold shift then uh, you're, you're basically picking a foreground colour and we don't want that so we need to get our colour back just like that, so press ok and uh, you want to change your fill up here to the foreground colour that we just made and then change our stroke to, we don't want a stroke so we need to click on this icon right here which will get rid of the stroke and now we have our um, now we have our, our colors set up for our rectangle so now we can just click and drag and make sure we hold once you've after you've clicked then you could hold shift and alt and then it will drag from the center and it will make a perfect square so let's just do that just like that okay that's good and now we can send the blending option to multiply which is right there and there you can see it makes this really uh, it kind of makes it transparent away but not like completely transparent so you just want to click and drag move that square around by holding alt so if you hold alt and drag you can see it duplicates and uh, you just make them different sizes just vary it up a little and uh, you could also change the opacity of some of them that also looks good so yeah, we're just going to change the opacity of these bottom ones and just going to drag this one over we'll make one more square over here as well we might actually make one just a bit smaller and there we go, that looks pretty cool. And um, now we have the square set up. I might actually lower the opacity of this one just a bit. And there we go, now we have all our squares set up. We're going to make one more square. And this shouldn't, well, this is where your logo is going to go. So just make it a decent size. Make sure it's centered. You can make sure it's centered just by dragging it until it snaps into the middle, where you can see this purple or this pink line going down the middle, just like that. And uh, it's just to make it a bit easier, we're going to make it our top layer just so we know which one it is. And uh, again, we're going to set it to multiply, just like that. And now we're going to drag in our logo. So just click and drag in, just like that. You could just use ordinary text if you don't have a logo. Um, so yeah, you can just use the text tool, which is over here, and just type. And uh, yeah, so that's how you add text. And um, now we're going to make sure it's centered again, just by, uh, we could just use our eye. But um, yeah, you could also just snap it to the middle using the pink line. And now you can see that we got our logo in the box, and but we want it to have this kind of effect where we have this, the box effect on our logo. So to do that, all you need to do is uh, press Command and then click on the thumbnail of your logo, as you can see, like the little box. And what that'll do is it will select your logo and make a selection over your logo. Now we can hide our logo, so now you can see it's not there. You can do that just by clicking on the eye, go to our rectangle, and then click on this mask icon in the bottom right. And there we go, you can see that the, the effect that we had on the box is now carried over onto our logo and it looks really cool. And we can move it around just like that. We, well, we can resize it just by pressing Command T and just moving it around like that. And uh, yeah, it looks really cool and uh, I quite like this effect. And uh, yeah, so you can use that effect in your banners and all that kind of stuff as well. So now that we've added our squares and we've got this light effect going on, it all looks really cool. So now we're gonna add our color correction. So to do that, we want our adjustments tab open. If you don't have this tab open, just go to window and adjustments, which is right there. And uh, now we're gonna start off with the brightness and contrast. So we're gonna increase our brightness a little, then increase our contrast as well. Okay, that's good. And uh, now we can increase, now we can add curves just by clicking on this icon and we'll drag down at the start and we'll just make a regular S shape, I think. Maybe, actually, maybe we'll just add a bit of brightness. And yeah, that looks really cool. And uh, yeah, so you can add, you can literally keep going with the color creation. But at the moment, 
I think it's lo looking pretty cool. We might add a bit more brightness though. And uh, yeah, and we might reduce the saturation a bit. Okay, cool. So that's basically how you do a really cool phone uh, phone wallpaper for pretty much the, well, the more common phones. You can see that uh, we got all of these um, all these phones here. And yeah, so that's how you do a phone wallpaper. Thank you for tuning into the video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.